In this online lecture, we're going to discuss how alkanes react via radical reactions. And let's look at our key points first. Number one, alkanes are unreactive compounds in general. And number two here, we're going to see that in order to get alkanes to react, you must pair them with reactive radicals. And number three here, halogenation of alkanes is a three-phase radical substitution reaction, which involves initiation, a propagation step, and a termination step. Now, let's look at an alkane right here, and let's remind ourselves about some of the properties of alkanes. For instance, remember alkanes don't have any polar bonds. The electronegativity of carbon and hydrogen are roughly the same, so there's no polarity for this molecule. Another thing that's true, that means therefore the molecule is not very nucleophilic, and it's also not electrophilic. Neither the carbons nor the hydrons are partially positive or partially negative. So this is why alkanes are not very reactive molecules. So in order to get them to react, what we're going to have to do is place them near reagents that are extremely reactive. This in turn will give the alkane no other option but to react with the molecule. So let's see how that works here. Here is our overall reaction. Notice you got CH4 methane, a typical alkane, and we're reacting a halogen, Cl2, with HV or heat, and we're getting CH3, Cl, and HCl as products. The HV is actually H nu, which comes from an equation in physics, which remember means energy equals H times the frequency of light, with H being Planck's constant. So we're interpreting this HV, and I'm calling it V just to make it simple here. We know that that means the addition of light. We'll see what role this plays in the mechanism in a few seconds. Now, in organic chemistry, it's very important that we know the descriptive mechanism of how this reaction goes down. And we should know it's broken up into three parts, with the first part being called initiation. And we're going to see these steps are appropriately named, which will help us remember these for our orgo test. So here's how it all begins. The Cl2 in this reaction reacts with either light or heat. What the light and heat does is simply break the bond between the two CLs. And notice our arrow movement here. We have single-headed arrows, which means the movement of one electron. The result of this arrow movement would look like this. Notice what we're getting here are two radicals. Remember, radicals have that unpaired electron sitting there, which makes these species very reactive and very unstable. So notice, in this initiation step, we went from a non-radical to a radical. And the type of bond cleavage performed here, if you remember, is homolytic bond cleavage. So let's pause for a second here and point out the key feature of a typical initiation reaction. It simply involves, like we said, a non-radical turning into a radical. This is initiation because the non-radical that we're turning into the radical is now becoming a very reactive species. So this kind of gets the reaction going. This then brings us to the second part of this descriptive mechanism, which is called propagation. What we end up doing here is taking the radical and now reacting it with our alkane. And remember, going back to our overall reaction, we're choosing to react methane as our alkane. So going back here, we're writing out our methane right here, and we're just emphasizing one of his CH bonds. And notice, here we have the Cl radical that's very reactive, now is forced to react with the alkane with this type of mechanism. The unpaired electron moves this way, and one of the electrons in the CH bond moves this way to meet up with him, and another electron in the CH bond jumps up on top of the carbon. Notice again, that CH bond is breaking homolytically. For products, we end up with something that looks like this. Notice the Cl radical is now bonded to the H that was originally bonded to the methane. And the methane has simply become a methyl radical. So now the methyl being radicalized, let's say, further reacts. But this time he reacts with a Cl2 molecule. 
Now remember here, where did this Cl2 molecule come from? If we go back to the overall reaction, remember we have the Cl2 right here. And the Cl2 we're reacting at this point simply is Cl2 that hasn't react with either the heat or light, which means it hasn't been homolytically cleaved, it's still intact. So going back, here we are. Let's look at the arrow movement here in this step. The radical electron here on the methyl meets up with one of the electrons in the Cl bond, and another electron in the Cl2 bond jumps up on the other Cl, again, homolytically. For products, we end up with something that looks like this. Notice we get the Cl radical, but we also get this thing right here as a product. And let's remind ourselves here, remember this is the product of the overall reaction. And remember, we also get this as a side product. It's in these propagation steps is where we get these things. Notice here is one of the products right here, and there's that side product HCl over here. However, let's focus now on what it means to be a propagation step. Notice the characteristics here. Propagation steps start with radicals and end with radicals but however, not the same radical, it's a different radical. In this case, Cl radical going to methyl radical. And in the other propagation step, we have the methyl radical going to the Cl radical. Make sense of this. Think about it. Propagation means to keep going. If we're just simply going from one radical to another, we're able to keep this reaction going by producing radicals, which will then go on to react with other non-radicals which means these propagation steps will keep happening as the reaction proceeds. However, we should also look at how these reactions end. Think about the big picture here for a second. As this reaction is proceeding, what we have in our reaction mixture is a buildup of radicals. Notice right here shaded in green. Again, we got Cl radicals floating around and we got those methyl radicals floating around. What's possible here is in the reaction mixture that these radicals can actually meet up. If they do, that's what defines what's called the termination step of this mechanism. For instance, let's say two Cl radicals happen to meet up in the reaction mixture. If they do, this is the electron movement. These two electrons pair, and we end up with this as a result. Notice we're getting a non-radical Cl2 molecule here. But this is not the only possibility. Remember, we also have methyl radicals floating around in solution. If these two meet up, it would be the same type of mechanism here, two electrons pairing, and giving us this right here as a product. Another non-radical. And the last possible combination is a Cl radical meeting up with a methyl radical. In this case, this is the electron movement, and we end up with this as a result. Again, make sense of this. These are termination steps because we're going from radicals to non-radicals, and these non-radicals are not going to be very reactive, so this is like an endpoint of the reaction. So to help us remember this, let's know that all termination steps involve a radical turning into a non-radical. So there it is, our overall reaction right here. But however, let's talk about quick product method here. Remember, on an organic chemistry test, we sometimes have to quickly get to the product without mulling through the mechanism. And for this, quick product method is very simple. What we're doing is we're taking the alkane right here, and we're noticing that if it happens to be reacted with some kind of halogen, in this case Cl2, with either heat or light, then what we're doing here is simply replacing one of the CH bonds of the alkane with a C halogen bond, in this case CCl. And then just in case, as a side product, the other Cl, in this case, gets bonded to a hydrogen. Another example here, just to make sure you got this reaction down, looks something like this. Notice in this case, we have an alkane, which is ethane, but we're reacting it with Br2 with either light or heat. And notice, again, all that's happening here is we're replacing one of the CH bonds with here a CBr bond. And notice we're getting this time HBr as a side product. Again, very simple quick product method. Some vocab here we should know is that the type of reaction that we're looking at here 
is called a radical chain reaction. The big picture here is that the light and heat in the initiation step that splits the Cl2 or the Br2 creates the original radicals, and those radicals then go on to react with alkanes, which then propagate into other radicals, which creates a chain of radical reactions, hence the term radical chain reaction. Another term that can describe this reaction is a radical substitution reaction. We notice this when we think of quick product. Again, a CH bond in an alkane is being substituted and turning into a C connected to a halogen bond. A smart orgo student should be able to draw out the descriptive mechanisms for these reactions. They can write out the initiation and even tell you its initiation and of course show you the characteristics of initiation. They could then take you to propagation and talk about all the possible termination steps. So to prepare for your exam, you should take a blank sheet of paper and try to, by yourself, write this whole process out. It'll really help you wrap your brain around what's happening here. So what did we learn here? Key points. Number one, we saw that again, alkanes are unreactive compounds because they have no polarity. They're not nucleophilic, they're not electrophilic. So therefore, we also saw that in order to get alkanes to react, we must pair them with reactive radicals. And by doing that, key point number three, halogenation of alkanes is a three-phase radical substitution reaction. We initiate, then we propagate, and then we terminate.